All right, folks. Uh, Matt Wagner here with InSource Renewables at our office in uh, Pittsfield. Uh, we're going to go over uh, the uh, different operations of the remote control for a Fujitsu uh, RLS 2 series heat pump. Um, the large orange button uh, in the center of the remote control is the power button. Uh, we're going to turn that on. And when you do turn it on, you'll see the uh, hood of the heat pump will open up. And one thing I do always tell people about these heat pumps is that uh, nothing ever really happens quickly. Uh, so always exercise a little bit of patience. Uh, don't get frustrated uh, and uh, rifle through the buttons too quick. All right, so we see the hoods come up and uh, the unit's going to start operating whatever function it's left in. Uh, so we have a good view of the screen here. Okay. So what we have here, uh, temperature control, we can adjust the temperature uh, in the room at the remote control. One point worth mentioning is the remote control is not a thermostat. Um, so the the unit does not heat or cool the space based on the temperature of the remote control. The thermostat is actually built in to the indoor unit. Okay, so we'll set this at 68 degrees. Um, say you have gone out for the day and your heat has set back on the uh, energy saving sensor. We'll go through that in a little bit. And you find it to be a little bit chilly in the house or in the summertime you come in from out working in the garden or something's a little too hot in the house you can force the unit into its maximum output uh, by pressing the powerful button. That makes the unit run at 100% of its output, uh, giving you the most heat that it can uh, to recover the temperature that you'd like in the space. In powerful mode, it'll run for 30 minutes uh, in that mode automatically, and then it'll set back to the uh, whatever you have the remote program to do to that temperature and it'll run uh, automatically. We have also a, uh, a minimum heat function here. Uh, say you're leaving for the weekend and you didn't need to keep the space heated. Uh, we could hit minimum heat. That's going to automatically just drop the heat down to 50 degrees. That's going to keep the place fairly cool. Um, if you come home you want to get it out of minimum heat you actually hitting the minimum heat button again won't do anything. It's actually the mode button because um, just turning the temperature up won't get you out of minimum heat. If you hit the mode button, it'll return to its former set point, 68 degrees. So now let's just go over the modes, the different functions of this heat pump model, this this uh, Fujitsu RLS2 model. Um, what we have is an auto mode. The auto mode will maintain your room uh, at a certain range of a constant temperature. Uh, this is one of the, the functions of this unit that does cause people some trouble. For example, in auto mode, if you had your room set at 68 degrees in the summertime and you had a nice cool night, uh, below 68 degrees, the heat pump would actually heat your house because it believes it wants you, uh, it believes that you want it to maintain a temperature of 68 degrees. Likewise, in the winter time, if you had a particularly sunny, warm day, uh, the unit could go into air conditioning mode. Generally, I encourage people to avoid the auto mode. Um, it can be a little bit of a pitfall. I I suggest you just select the mode you want the unit to run in. Uh, so the next next function down is going to be the cool mode. That's air conditioning. Uh, so hot days in the summertime, I think uh, some people are enjoying um, that they have the option of having air conditioning in their house. Uh, I certainly do. Not! Uh, dry mode. For most of us Yankees, I find this to be a very uh, useful mode. Whenever I'm showing somebody in their home how this unit works in the summertime, I always put it first into dry mode. 
What dry mode does is it dehumidifies the space by using very little energy on the outdoor unit to just cool the uh, coil on the inside of this one. So all the air coming through the unit is dehumidified. This makes the space feel a lot uh, cooler just because it's a lot drier. Um, people generally think that that's air conditioning, but it's not. It's worth noting that it will only operate in dry mode down to the temperature that it's set at. Um, so you may have to set the temperature down in order to dehumidify. Fan. Some people wouldn't find a use for the fan mode. Uh, in fan mode, all the unit is doing is just blowing air through the indoor unit. There's absolutely no energy being used by the outdoor unit. Um, say if you had a wood stove in your home or another source of heat, um, typically I would think of this as being great with a wood stove you got the wood stove going, you can actually use the fan on your heat pump to just circulate that heat. Works works actually really well. Uh, and then, whoops, excuse me, the wrong button. Uh, we'll go to heat mode. <clears throat> and that's what we really think most people are installing these units for, is uh, to offset their fossil fuel or electric bill on um, another heat source. Or sometimes it's just to to whittle away at the amount of firewood you're burning. Uh, in any mode, you can always manually adjust the fan speed here on the right hand side with the fan button. The most efficient way for the unit to run is in auto on the fan control. Um, however, if you're trying to watch a movie or you find the fans making too much noise or uh, you want it to push a little more air out, you can always manually control the fan speed here. We'll hear the fan come up on the high speed. Some folks have asked uh, just how loud these units can get. Uh, here in fan mode, it's in auto. Uh, we have the unit set at 70 degrees. It's about 5 degrees outside. Uh, it's blowing out some nice warm air. Um, what I'll do is I'll manually turn the fan to maximum output here so we can hear the difference. And it's not really that much louder than your average refrigerator running. Remember that when the unit is running, if it were running this loud, you, you can adjust the fan speed down. Well, the next mode, uh, if you find that uh, there's cold spots in the house or in the area of the unit, remember that it does only push heat out uh, about 25 feet. Uh, you have the option of hitting the swing button. Um, by hitting the swing button, what it's going to do is it's going to move the louvers uh, up and down on the bottom of the unit to try to sweep heat back and forth across the space. You can also say you feel like the unit's blowing air on you. Uh, you can manually set them by using the set button. Um, in heating mode, uh, the unit is actually going to push heat down across the floor because heat rises. In cooling mode, uh, the louvers will be pointing more out straight. It'll push cool air out across the room and that cool air will sink. Uh, that's kind of the basic premise of why those louvers face where they do. The most efficient way to, for the unit to run uh, is most likely just the way um, that it wants them set, um, but this is your heat pump and you are its commander. I'm just kidding. You better not include that. So here I'm setting, manually setting, changing the direction. Okay, so we've gone through swing and set. Uh, now you'll see you have um, an energy saving program and an economy mode. Uh, I'll go through the energy saving program first. Uh, what this is is there's a little sensor on the bottom left hand side of the indoor unit and it can actually tell when you are or aren't in the room. Uh, when you leave the room for a period of time uh, it starts to step the room temperature back in two degree increments. Uh, so say we have the room temperature set at 70 degrees after about 20 minutes, it'll drop it back to 68. Over the course of an hour and a half, 
it will actually lower the room temperature by 8 degrees. So it's a fairly significant drop, um, but it does work well uh, during the day. If you leave, the heat goes down. When you come back, the heat will come back up. Obviously, however, if you're, say, taking a nap on a couch, uh, it will also lower the temperature because you're not moving. Um, if you have cat or dog or uh, curtains moving in the house, uh, it will also pick up on that motion and it will maintain the temperature, it won't drop it. Um, so those are just some little things to look out for. All that is more thoroughly detailed in your owner's manual. Uh, the economy mode, um, when we hit the economy mode button, you'll see a little light comes on on the right hand side of the screen uh, that's telling you that you're in economy mode. What the economy mode does is it actually says the operator of the machine wants the room heated to 70 degrees, but we don't believe that the owner of the machine knows the difference between 70 degrees and 68 degrees. So instead of heating the room to 70, it actually just heats the room to 68. How does that make you feel? However, during cooling mode, it does also limit the capacity of the outdoor unit to 70%. So it will uh, lower the electric bill by reducing the cooling during cooling mode. Uh, however, it does not do that during heating mode. It just sets the temperature down a little bit further than what you asked it to do. Um, so if you're finding the room temperature cool during heating mode, uh, make sure that you're not in economy mode. Um, if this is a primary heat source, uh, I would consider just leaving it out of either of those modes. Um, we also have outdoor unit low noise. Um, in that mode, the outdoor unit will run uh, at less of a capacity. Uh, it will lower the amount of noise it makes. It will also lower the amount of heat or cooling that the unit's able to put out. Down in the gray bar here, we also have uh, the weekly functions that you can program this unit to come on or off at different times. Uh, if you do get into that and you choose, it's in the owner's manual. Uh, however, it can be a little bit complicated. If you find you're having difficulty with the unit after you've programmed it, uh, there is a reset button down here on the right hand side of the pencil. Uh, you can just push it in and reset that. Um, adjusting the clock is also in the owner's manual. It's very, very simple. All right. Thank you. Thanks for listening.